Okay, so good afternoon, every friends. Now you are all my friends now. So I'm Felix. I'm Felix from Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. I'm the Technology Corporation Manager in Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. So uh, if you join the MySport Challenge, actually you, you, you know me quite well because I appear several times already. So it is not the first time we meet each other. And also we have some new friends today. So I would like to also welcome all of you to come to this briefing section of My Sport Challenge, Pathology Dynasis 2021. So it is actually a joint event between Huawei, Huawei Cloud, Hong Kong STP, Guangzhou Anbiping, and Ibing Li, these all companies. So uh, before we start our briefing section today, let me briefly introduce what are we doing? What is the game? What are we competing? So today's agenda, we will, I will briefly talk about again. So if you joined me before, uh, please just forgive me for these 10 minutes. So I will again talk about uh, what are we doing? And also later on, uh, we will have our colleagues to teach you a little bit again, our evaluation platform and a little bit on Huawei Cloud, how to use Huawei Cloud, but not too much this time, just a little bit breathing. And then at the last part, we will talk mainly on the evaluation. So how could you get the good points, good score, and to win the challenge? So at the beginning, uh, in this competition, actually, you are invited to use my score. So what is my score? Can anyone answer this question? What is my score? A little bit new for you guys, I know. Yep. So my score is a AI tools that can help you to design your AI model. So it is developed by Huawei for AI training and for inferencing. So if you know AI model, AI training, AI inferencing, it is not difficult to you. So if you know TensorFlow, if you know PyTorch, for you, it is not difficult to use my score. So now in our competition, you are invited to use Huawei my score to develop your own AI model for developing the trustworthy AI pathology diagnosis models for the cancer cells, for identifying the cancer cells. So it helped us and helped you also to ensure privacy, explainable and high accuracy model. So in this competitions, we have 30 teams to join and each team has one to three members. So what we have is we have trainings, we have pitchings, we have award ceremony. And of course, the most important part is your time to work on Huawei Cloud using my score to develop and train your own AI model. So the competition is separate into two major stage. The first one is the model evaluation, which is you submit your model to our evaluation platform and to get the score. And the next stage is the pitching stage. So I will talk to you later more, uh, what's the difference? So before we start to dig into the competitions, uh, let me briefly introduce you who we are. So Huawei, we have Huawei Cloud Hong Kong and Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. So Huawei Cloud is a leading cloud service provider committed to bringing affordable, effective and reliable cloud and AI services to you guys. So Huawei Cloud is not only serving uh, mainland China, but also Hong Kong and around the world. So if you have a Huawei Cloud account, you can access different computing resources and also different services uh, from your location to other places. So for Huawei Hong Kong Research Center, what we do, we conduct research. Research in AI, fundamental theory, chips, microarchitecture, software engineering, trustworthy software, and so on. So we have 250 more researchers in Hong Kong and almost half of us have a PhD degree here. So let me make an advertisement. If you are interested in doing research, feel free to send your CV to us. So we're always recruiting. So we have two locations, one in Hong Kong Science Park, another one is in Jim Sa Chui. So for Hong Kong STP, as most of you know STP quite well, right? Science and Technology Park Corporation, it is a public corporation set up by the Hong Kong government in 2001 to foster the development of innovation and technology in Hong Kong. So it helps to cultivate successful innovation and technology companies, 
form strong local and international partnership networks and create a triviering community. Hello. So, and then let me introduce a little bit more to our partners. So Guangzhou LBP Medicine, as in Chinese, in Anbiping. So they are uh, they founded in 2005. They're the first list company on the science and technology board of the Shanghai Stock Exchange in the field of pathology dialysis in China. So they have more than 500 registered and record products and covering nearly 1,800 medical institutions in China. So they also have quite a lot of subsidiaries and one of them is called iBingdi. So iBingdi is a subsidiary of LPP Medicine founded in 2017. Their real-time visual field sharing system and pathology medical image analysis and processing system are widely used in intelligent dialysis, data management and data quality control. So in this competition, all of our data, all of our image cancer cells are sponsored and provided by LPP Medicine and IBMD. So uh, in this competition, you are invited to use the images provided by them and use our computing services and also using STP facilities to train your model and to also build up your own team. All right? So it is a timeline of the whole event. So today we are already in the middle, in the briefing section. So before today, actually we already have two trainings to teach you guys how to use MySball, how to use Huawei Model Arts, Huawei Cloud, and also how to do pathology diagnosis. So if you miss it, don't worry, click the link and you can find our link. You can find the YouTube channels, our YouTube video on our main website. Our main website is at mysportchallenge.com, mysportchallenge.com. So find this information if you miss it. And all of the training materials has already been uploaded. So don't worry if you miss it. So after the day, you have time to build your own AI model and submit it before or not before October 15. So at the time, at the clock, 23, 59, 59 of October 15, you have to submit your model before it. So we will take, we will take a snapshot of a ranking board in our evaluation system to see if you are the top six team, the top six team with the highest model score, you will be invited to enter our final pitching stage. So two stage here, the first stage you have chance you have time to submit your model to train your model you have 30 times 30 quota 30 three zero quota to submit your trained model into our onto our system and also you're provided Huawei cloud accounts to train your model or to evaluate your model in your own so after you train your model submit to our evaluation system get your score with the good score then enter the final pitching so later on, our colleague will talk to you, will teach you about how do we evaluate your model and how do we evaluate your pitching. So don't run away, please. And then after this, uh, for the winners and the runner-ups, you're invited to join our award ceremony. It is a Huawei Cloud Summit. It's one of the annual big events of Huawei Cloud Hong Kong every year. So you will be invited to receive your award on that big day. Final pitching day, October 22nd. On Friday, it will be next door, uh, next door well, roughly. So it will be in 17W in Square at 2.30. So mark your calendar, mark your calendar first. It will have pitching evaluation. For the award ceremony, it will be on 26th of October on Tuesday. It will be held in Grand Hyatt, Hong Kong in the afternoon. So again, mark your calendar to reserve your own time. So what are the prices? These are the most exciting part that I think. 
So two ways that we are evaluating. One is the model score, and another one is the pitching score. For, for the model score, it's quite easy. Submit your model, get in the uh, ranking board, and for the winner, you will get 60,000 cash and also 12,000 Huawei Cloud credit per team as your prices. For the runner-up, 45,000 cash and 6,000 Huawei Cloud credit. And then if you enter the pitching stage, we will evaluate your pitching separately from the model score. So you have another chance, maybe on top or maybe separately to get your, get your prizes. So for the pitching score winners, 45,000 cash, 6,000 Huawei Cloud credit. For the runner-up, 30,000 cash, 6,000 Huawei Cloud credit. And then for each team, that's important for each team. If you submit your models with the explainable score, you will get a special prize. Special prize is you will get for each team around 900 Hong Kong dollars over the years and also 1,500 credit per team. So at least it is not difficult for you to obtain this one. And how to get this one? Later on, my colleague Eugene will talk to you, will teach you how to get explainable score. So explainable, my score explainable is uh, explainable AI is one of the features of MySpot as well. So um, make sure that you understand how to get it. So please look for your team name if I miss you. These are the teams that we have admitted. So if I miss you, please let me know. Please, please let me know. So these are the, all the teams that we have admitted. We have received more than 30 teams already. And some of them, unfortunately, yes, we cannot recruit all the people. So find your name, find your team name. If you are not here, just let me know, okay? So who are you guys? Where do you from? Some of you from CTU, some from PolyU, Hong Kong U, Hong Kong UST, these are from the academia. Some of them, some of you are PhD students. You have your own research team. Some of you are undergraduate students. Uh, working hard individually. So we are all appreciate. And also we have some uh, research friend and industry, industry friends who join the competitions to play together, to have fun together and to have discussion together. We have uh, D Square 4 H, the laboratory of data discovery for health. We have inside technology, we have uh, Statletic and also Gorus. So if you want to make some friends, if you want to talk to the people, if you want to maybe find a job, feel free to join our Discord server. We already set up a Discord server for you guys to have discussion and interact with each other. So don't miss a chance to find your partners, find your friends, or maybe find your competition as well. So how do you get the score? What are we doing? This is our problem statement. It's not difficult, right? What you need to do is to train a MySport AI model to identify the locations and the classification of the cancer cells in the pathology, pathological images. So AI model, it will help the pathologist in the diagnosis of the peripheral pulmonary diseases in, in short term, just lung cancer. So in the CS point of view, it is a multi-label object detection problem what you need to do to classify the cells. How many classes we have? Four main classes. In short term, SCC, AC, SCLC, and SCLCs. So in the data sets, if you download it, if you open it, you already find the images has already been labeled. My colleagues later on will help you to explain a little bit more what is it. So basically, for you, it's a little bit hard to understand. So let me just briefly, briefly rearrange the classes for you guys. Two main, two main classes, non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. Between these two, under the non-small cell lung cancer, there is two main classes as well. So it could be squamous cell carcinoma, or it could be adenocarcinoma. But also there is a chance is if the doctors, if the pathologist, they cannot 
distinguish between these two, it may be the point, it may be to go up a level to classify it as just a non-small cell lung cancer. And it is also one of the problems that we are having in our real life for the pathologist, for the doctors, sometimes because of the amount of work, maybe because of the quality of the surfaces, it may not be easy to distinguish or to classify these type of cells. So it is how AI is useful and helpful to reduce the workload of the pathologist and also to increase the quality of classifying the cancer cells. And it is also your task now. So you get enough images, you have enough data to train your AI model to become a helper of the doctors and the pathologists. So these cells, they look quite similar. And these are also one of the challenge in this game. All right. So today, basically, we have two main sections. The first section is, is a little bit more about Huawei Cloud and evaluation platform. So I have to tell you one important uh, message is, for the first time, for the first training, we teach you how to use the Huawei Cloud. There is a little bit change, a little bit change in the new version of Huawei Cloud. So later on, my colleague, uh, Mr. Ryan, Ryan Yan, will helps you to go through it again. So make sure that you pay attention at that point, especially on the model training. So it is a little bit different than before. So if you have download your previous slides from our main website, please we download it again today because there is a little bit update over there. And it's not difficult, but just a minor update, but it affects you to train your model. And then the evaluation platform, as I already see some of the team is already submitted your first training uh, model. So you have 30 times, so don't worry, keep submitting. So don't waste a chance and don't wait until the last minute because you know, until the last minute always people are rushing and the server will die. So try to have your score as much as possible, as soon as possible. And we will only take the highest score take the highest score as your final score. We will not take the, the latest one, but the highest one. So don't worry about this. After that, after the break, we will have an evaluation criteria to teach you how do we evaluate, evaluate your, your, your time, uh, uh, your model and your pitching. So Eugene will help us to, to talk about this. All right. These are all the websites that you need to pay attention. First official website, mysportchallenge.com. And from there, you will get the link put to the GitHub. All the useful resources is already posted there. All the training materials, data, notebook, whatever. Discord for communication. So if you have any questions or if you have want to find friends or if you want to just uh, maybe complain, go to Discord. And then you can also... Uh, check the rule books and guidelines, make sure that you are not violating anything. Or if you want to find some more information in details, go to the rule books and guidelines. There are much more details, important information, especially in the data section. In the data section, it gives you much more statistic and also uh, how to access the data. It is quite important over there. So in this, at this point, do you have any questions? Do you have any problems? So if no, then we move on. I would like to invite my colleague, Mr. Ryan Yan, to talk about our evaluation platform and Huawei Cloud. So please. Okay. Hello, I'm Ryan. So today I'm going to talk a bit more about model training and evalu evaluation guideline, which you're going to go through. So uh, before uh, in the previous section, I already talked about a little bit about it, but these days, uh, we have a little bit change, so uh, please be attention to this change. I'll uh, mark it down later. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is the timeline again. I'm gonna skip it first. So I think uh, all of you, if you have already registered, so you will have a confirmation email with the uh, Huawei Cloud uh, IAM username and then password. So you can reset your password, but uh, we have
we have already uh, distributed you with these passwords. So you go to the Huawei Cloud and then choose uh, I am user, and then just fill in these three fields. And then uh, uh, remember to choose Beijing 4. And then that's all. So I see some of you have already logged in, but some of you haven't. So uh, you can try that later. And after that, you can start your training. So uh, basically you can also train your model on your local uh, environment. If you are familiar with uh, Jupyter Notebook in your local environment, you can of course download the data set one and then train it on your local machine. But if you want to train it faster, there is uh, some resource, we call it Ascend, which is something uh, similar as uh, TPU. So you can use that. We have already uh, give it you for, for, for free. So you can use that as for your training. And then if you want to train the second data set, which has about 4,000 or 5,000 uh, images, uh, you can also use this and then connect it to our data set. And then you can train that 4,000 images. So this is the overview of how you're gonna do it. So first of all, you have to upload your code, your source code to OBS. And then after that, you create an algorithm and use that algorithm to create a training job. So that's all. Now I'm gonna talk about the detail, uh, how to upload to OBS. I saw some of you have already created your bucket, but uh, if you haven't, just make sure to create a bucket so uh, create a bucket that can store all your files and uh, you can arrange your folders, arrange your file structure there. And then uh, I will show a demo video later. So now uh, we have uh, some file structures that recommend you to do this, but of course you can uh, feel free to uh, manage your file structures as your own preference. And after you upload your source code, which is the Python file to OBS. And then you can create the algorithm based on that source code. So algorithm in, is in the model arts and that model arts, uh, the algorithm, you can imagine that as that just your source code. So you can use the uh, uh, built-in algorithm, but which is not useful in this. So you have to, of course, uh, to create your own. And actually we have uploaded some uh, example source code on the GitHub. I assume some of you have already downloaded it from there. So if you haven't downloaded it, you can try it out there. There's a, a training example. So download it and then you can upload it as an example and then see how it works. Okay. So uh, I'll just go through very quickly because I will show the video later. So you have to create uh, the name and then the AI engine, we choose SN Power Engine with the mind spore. And then you can choose the code directory here, which is the one that you have just uploaded to OBS. And then the boot file, which is the entry file. It may be your main.py, it may be your trend.py, uh, anything you, you name your file. So after that, uh, oh, okay. So after that, you have to specify, so this is the different from the others, uh, from, from the previous uh, version. So you have to uh, specify the output URL so you can just uh, name it. So this is from my code. This is from the example code. So you can name it uh, anything you like. So uh, output URL, output, train URL, anything you like. And then you have to par uh, pass it to the output path mapping configurations. So put it the same name as this one. And then that's all. So uh, I'm gonna elaborate it how it works. So uh, after you create this algorithm, you're gonna, uh, use this algorithm to create a train job, yeah? So that training job will ask you to select an OBS location uh, for this output URL. But that OBS location is just for everything, uh, every output from your model trainings. So when you're training the model, it will create an instance for you. And then in that instance, it will allocate a uh, local instance URL. Uh, not URL, locations for you. And then everything you want to upload to that OBS, you can just put it into that folder. So you can just handle all the output in the value of this output, output URL. 
So I'll also show the demo code and the clip later. So you can just have the uh, abstract idea about this. Okay, and after that, you can create a trend jobs based on the algorithm. So in the trend jobs, you can select the algorithm that you have just created. And then as I said, you have to select the OBS. This is the OBS location. So you select this OBS location as your output uh, destination. So everything uh, output in your uh, instance will go to this OBS location. And after that, remember to choose Ascend 1 because the default is 8 and which is really expensive. So uh, of course you can use 8 if you like, but uh, I suggest you to use 1 because it's fast enough already. So choose it one, and you can see the price should be something around this, not the 199, something like that. And then just click submit. And most of the time you just need to wait about like uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes and it will, it will finish. Depends on your model. Okay. So uh, that's the structures, that's the uh, overview of how this works. So uh, when you create a trend job in model R's, uh, exactly you are using uh, our data set too which will not give it to you, which will be stored in our own bucket. So uh, you can uh, imagine that it's a private bucket. Okay. So in this bucket, you can uh, map this data URL, label URL and metadata URL in your source code. So in this source code, you can map to these three URL and these three OBS URL, which is our bucket with the data set two. So I've already provided this and then you can just use this and then pass it to your code. So I'll also show the demo code and you can see it from there. And then after that, in your, in your own source code, you have to pass the output URL, which I have just mentioned. So these two combining together and it will create a trend job with the data set we provide and with the output URL OBS location, which you provide. And then you can see the final outcome. So um, this is just a brief introduction of how it works, like how we how you copy copy our data set to your own uh, source code. So this is using the mock scene. Uh, you can see it from here. So uh, you don't have to really understand what it is. Uh, never mind. Just uh, use something like this. Uh, we have already provided in the source code as well. Example code. So just copy uh, the data URL, which is from our bucket, to your data path. Uh, whichever you like. Okay, so after trend job, you can see from the model R's, there are quite lots of status here. So some of the uh, completed and some of them is like terminated because some of them you can, you can some, see some uh, trend jobs. They have some uh, maybe stuck into some trouble uh, in your source code. So it will be run forever long. So <laughs> I think you have to terminate it or the, your money will become uh, disappear. <laughs> so some of them will be failed. So you have to see to, to, to see what's the problem. And if you see that it failed or complete anything, you can just uh, click this into it. And then you can see the log, uh, how it runs through uh, the whole process and can see what's the arrow here. And uh, I think that's all for the training jobs. But I want to show a demo video for you. So to go through step by step. Okay, so we can go through our uh, website. And then there are quite lots of links here. There's a rule books here, which has all the details in here and then our discord. And then these are the resources we provided. So you can see that there's the guideline, which is the PowerPoint of today's. And then you can see the example code of training and for evaluation as well. And now we're gonna go to this Power Cloud training video. I think uh, there's no sound, it's okay. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a background uh, music, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so 
uh, I think it's too fast, but anyway. So after you have logged in, so you can see that this is the uh, landing page of the Huawei Cloud. And then remember to choose, oh, it's too high. Okay, so it's uh, Beijing 4 here. You can see that you have to choose Beijing 4, which has all the resources you need. Okay, and after that, you can go to the OBS, which is called Object Storage Service, and then create your own bucket. So uh, in the right corner, there's a create bucket, click it, and then choose Beijing 4, and then create a name. Remember that this name is a globally unique name. Okay. And after that, choose multi-AZ storage, standard. Actually, it can based on, it, it can customize by yourself, but I just use this. Uh, it's because it's free and then it's uh, enough for you already. But you can, of course, you can customize it by yourself. So it should be private. You can also choose public, let everyone see it, but I don't recommend that. Okay. And then after that, just create it. So it's very simple. And after you have created, you can upload your source code to OBS. So click on the OBS bucket that you have just created, and then go to objects and upload, upload the objects. And I create a folder here first, which is called code. And then uh, I have to upload the code, but the core code, you can see it from the GitHub which is called the uh, training example source code. Download it and then upload it to OBS. Okay, so you can see that there's a training example here in our GitHub and then click it there and then uh, just upload the code here. So you can see if, if you are using the example code and there'll be some files here. And then after that, create a folder called output. Because as I said, uh, you will output your uh, checkpoint, which is your weights of your model and uh, anything, the log, anything you want to that folder. So you, you have to create a folder for your output. And then after that, you can create an algorithm from the model arts. So click on the model arts and choose Beijing 4. And then go to algorithm management. And then you can create the algorithm here. And uh, you can name it by yourself. Uh, I suggest you to name it with the version name, like a V1, V2, uh, so that you can handle it very well. And then choose SN Power Engine, mine Spore 1.3. And then if you choose Code Directory, when you select it, it will direct you, uh, it will pop up an OBS location, which you have just uploaded your code. So you can just go to the bucket you have just created, the code you have just uploaded, and then choose it. Okay, and select the entry point file, which I have just mentioned, which is trend.py for the example code. And we don't need the input path mapping, but we need output path mapping in my source code. So it's based on your source code, which I use output URL. If you remember that the source code, I have a parse and argument called output URL. So it's based on what you named your, in your source code as well. And after that, just click submit and that's all. Okay, so if you go on to this, uh, you can see the algorithm uh, that you created. I name it like V1, V2, V3. So uh, it's, uh, you can name it by yourself and then you can just click create training job here or you can go to the training management and to create a new trend job based on this algorithm. So I click create training jobs. Uh, this is the algorithm that you have just created and go to training tab and create. Okay. And then you also have to type your name and you can type it based on your algorithm. And, uh, oh, this is out, uh, uh, input the output location. So you have just type your output locations here, which you have just uh, name it in your uh, algorithm and select, which also direct to your OBS. 
and then select the output folder you want to output it. And then after that, create uh, choose ascend. So remember to choose ascend. Or you can also choose GPU if you want, but ascend might be faster. Uh, and then it will default to eight, so which is a lot of money. So you have to choose one. Choose one, and then you can see the price is about this 20. And then uh, choose the output log, which is all the log uh, you may need to inspect your training job. And then just create it. Okay, and you can see that it's pending or it's running. So if you, are, you have already one is running, then the other one will pending. And some of them will be completed, some of them will be failed. So you can just uh, click it inside and then see the uh, log. I think I have, okay, you just click it here. And then you will see the log output. But for now it's pending, so there's no log. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much all that you need for the training job. So I think uh, it has go through every step by step and I can show a little bit about the demo code here. Wait. Okay, so in this demo code, uh, the entry point is trend.py, yeah? So in this trend.py, you can see that we will handle the input data from here. Data URL, label URL, I just hard code it here and you can also hard code, hard code it here or just pass it as a parameter. And then you can handle it later on. And this is the argument that I have just passed in, which is output URL. Okay. So that's actually all that you need for training jobs. Uh, is there any questions for now? No? <laughs> is it too fast? I, I don't I don't know. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, if you forgot, just go to this YouTube video again. Okay. And then after that, I remember, I believe that you also received a passcode and your username for this evaluation platform. Yeah. So I bet all of you have already clicked on that link and then reset your password and then log into your platform. So if you haven't did uh, do that, just uh, remember to do this. And then you can click on login. So uh, I just use this just me so apparently i'm the number one now so <laughs> I, I think you guys can beat me very quickly so uh, remember to submit your code here and then you can see your output your score and then you'll be on that ranking board okay so i just go through there quite lots of features here and you can also uh see your profile and then you can uh, change your team member's name and add the instructors here and then go to Discord. And then there are the ranking board details, submission history, which is the uh, submission uh, history of your own team. Okay. And uh, mainly you will use this and you can see that you have already, I have already remanded uh, trials like 28 already because I've submitted two. And then you can see it from here and then upload your source code here. And then you can use the source code we have provided, which is from here, also in our GitHub. So uh, evaluation example and go to the release file. Uh, I just use this, there are two. So this one is CNN, this one is YOLO, and I just uh, download it first. Okay, and download the Python file. So the CKPD file is the checkpoint, which is the weight that you have just trained from the model arts. So uh, remember that after you train your job on the model arts, remember to output the checkpoint file to the OBS and then download it from your OBS. And then we will use that to evaluate your score. Okay, so I just upload it here. Okay, and then you can see that you have already have the Python, which is the source code for the evaluations and the checkpoint file here. So of course this one can be, uh, this participant model by Pi. Uh, you can also upload a zip file because most of the time you will not only have one Python file. So you can upload a zip file and uh, as this one, YOLO v3. So this is the zip file. 
So you can upload a zip file and then it will help you to extract. So don't worry about that. And after that, confirm and submit. And you can see the process. Uh, it has uploaded. Uh, okay, there's something arrow, which is because I have just uh, created the training jobs here. And then it, it, cannot, it can only process one training job at the once. Okay. But most of the time, you can see uh, it is start evaluating your score. And then uh, after you have evaluated or you have completed, you can see the logs file, which is the same as the OBS uh, log file. I will just download it for you. And then you can see the whole process of what you have done and the completed. And then you can also see your FROC graph. Uh, I have already deleted, but uh, you will see your graph uh, as the oh, this one, for example, like this. So you can see your FROC score with a graph like this. And then, uh, of course, you'll see your FROC score, your explainable, which is your XAI score, and the total score. So that's uh, all about the evaluation. So I think I have go through step by step very clearly from the training job to evaluations. So if you still uh, have any questions, just go through that video again. And I think for evaluations, uh, you just uh, download the uh, source code from the uh, GitHub and then you can try it by your own. And I think we will create uh, two more quotas for you to test it out. So don't worry. So you'll be like, uh, have like 32 trials uh, in total. Okay. So that's all for these two stages. So do you guys have any problem for now? No? No problem? Okay. If there's no problem, then uh, my colleague, Eugene, will talk about how you're going to score in the XAI field and what is our evaluations, uh, what kind of uh, format that we are using. So uh, next, welcome, Eugene. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. So uh, I'm Eugene. Uh, I'm also from HKRC as an intern. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me sit down. Wait. Let me set it up. So, is it here? Yeah, this one. OK. So as you may know, our uh, competition is separated in two parts. The first is the, I need to hide this, wait a second. So the first part is the accuracy score and the second is the explainable score. So uh, this competition is quite special because there's a component for explainability. So if your model can do good on the accuracy, if it doesn't explain well, then uh, probably no one will know how your model works. So uh, we will start with the explainable score, so a classification score. So this is also the accuracy. We'll use the FROC to calculate the uh, score from your prediction. So we have the you you uh the main idea is to check whether you have accurately locate and classify the cancer cells, and for the explainability is like how does it compare to the ground truth that we have. So the ground truth we have here is like a mask of the uh image, also uh annotated by the uh specialist. So. Uh, we'll compare your explainability with the one from the specialist to see how well does your model uh, explain the problem. So the final six highest score will enter the uh, final round. Yeah, so that's it. So for the first part, you need to understand uh, what is the true positive. The meaning of true positive uh, is uh, quite different in machine learning context. So there's lots of way to identify whether a prediction is true. So the first thing is, uh, as you can see from bottom, we have a uh, definition which is called the intersection over prediction. 
I didn't write the full name here, but you can kind of get it. So the idea is that the intersection of your uh, between the ground truth and the prediction bounding boxes, and we will find over the prediction. So the area, the, diff, uh, the ratio of the area, as long as the ratio of the area is greater than 0 0.5, we identify your prediction as correct. So this means it is a true positive. So as you can see, there's some example at the bottom. The first one is uh, the, the prediction bounding box is inside the ground truth bounding box. So this bounding box, prediction bounding box is true positive. And the second one, as you can see, this one, the prediction bounding box is uh, overlaying the ground truth bounding box, but the intersection over prediction is 0 0.66. So this one is still positive because it's greater than 0 0.5. And the last two, as you can see, this clearly uh, specify which cells inside have the uh, bounding box. And uh, the, they are inside the, this ground truth bounding box. And therefore, this one is true. These two are true, positive. But then this one only have 0 0.14. So it's false positive. So it's that simple, right? This idea. Is that OK? Oh, yeah. So now uh, I want to ask a question. Um, so this is one of the examples just now. So can someone tell me which one is true positive and which one is false positive? Maybe I'll ask you, which one is true positive? The left. The left too? Okay. What do you think? The, the top one? How about the bottom one? They are false positive, right? So, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, how about the number of true positive and false positive? Can someone give me some numbers? So, how many true positive are there? Two? Okay. So, this is the idea that we are going to talk about. So, actually, there's only uh, one true positive. Because uh, in our context, we want to uh, we want to identify all the ground truth compared with the prediction. So although there is two two positive uh, bonding boxes inside the ground truth, but it's only counted as one. So this is the idea here. So the next thing is that with the uh, with the true and false positive, we will be able to calculate the recall and the false positive uh, value. So with this two value, we can draw a graph, which is very important, as you can see in the evaluation uh, system just now Ryan shown. There is a graph. So that one uh, will determine what is your score. So the first thing is that suppose we have five ground truth boxes, and then we have three image. Okay, so these five ground truth boxes can split into any of the three. So as long as it is just five. And as, as an example, we have this uh, table that shows the prediction probability A, B, C, D, E, these five bounding boxes and probably some other bounding boxes. With their prediction, we sorted by the number. And then each of them have like their IOP greater than 0 0.5. Yes, no, something like that. And as an example, the bounding boxes can also uh, be true positive in two of the ground truth. So we always select the highest one highest IOP. So the highest IOP in this case is one. So we will be counted it towards one. So you will see that there will be some problems later. Although there is three bounded boxes with uh, true positive, but it couldn't cover enough uh, ground truth. So, so our algorithm will first uh, go through the threshold. We will threshold, pro we will threshold some probabilities and then we'll calculate the recall and false positive per image to draw that graph. Yeah. So as, let's take the threshold of 0 0.9. And then in this case, only these two uh, will be under inside our threshold. So the recall will be one over five. So like one of the true uh, ground truth, and then five of them are, uh, is the total of the number of bounding boxes, which is our recall value. And then the false positive per image, now we have one. So our FP false positive per image can be greater than one because you can have like loss of false positive, right? So 
we will be able to draw another data point here, let's say. So, and then we'll go to 0 0.7. And then here we get another point. Although just now, like we got a data point from here, but then now I found out that your model actually did quite well. Let's say I, if I have a threshold lower and then I can get the higher score with the same false positive, then I'll take the maximum. And 0 0.5, which there's no more uh, true positive. And in this case, actually, if you take a look, you only get two true positive, although you have three of them. And then the other one doesn't count as false positive. So the one that's these two overlaps with this because both of them says that the ground truth uh, for the boss one is correct. So there's only one, uh, one true positive here for these two and then another one for two. So you got two. So two out of five. And the false positive have two, so you got two out of three. So actually, yeah. So later, after let's say we completed all, then we will perform linear interpretation from the end. So here we will just extend them towards uh, whatever maximum is that there is. So the FRC would be the value of the force, uh, value of the recall when force positive is 104, 102, 1, 2, 4, and 8. So if we look at that graph, then we can see that 1 over 4 is around here. Let's say, and then 1 over 2, 1, and 2, and 4, and 8. So it's like 0 0.4 times 5. So we have like 1, 2, 3, 4, then four of them there, and then another one, which is like around 0 0.3, let's say, and then we average those values. Then we get the, this one FROC. So the final score will be, uh, we will take the average of four classes. Remember we have four classes, AC, SEC, SCLC, and SCLC. We'll take the average of those, and then we will get the final classification, classification score here. Yeah. So you can also implement your own algorithm uh, I expect most people might not go so deep onto the, uh, this algorithm, but we will try to help uh, you guys to achieve this. Yeah. So I, now I want to give a question. So I want to ask like, does a model with lots of prediction voting boxes with very low confidence, so they will not be inside the threshold, right? implies a lower expected FRC score, which means the FRC score will be low. Now I want to ask someone. No, not sure? Okay, does anyone have any answer for this? Okay, so the, actually the answer is uh, no. Because remember we threshold our uh, FRC, we, we will calculate your recall values when false positive is around this. So if your confidence is low, that's very likely they are false positive. And in that case, you have too much false positive that it doesn't even inside, it's not even inside the, this range. So if it is outside, let's say the data point is around 16, then it will not be inside the range of this. So it will not affect the FRC score very likely. So your, F, your, uh, your recall value can only increase when your false positive per image increase. So that's the case. So the next thing is uh, I want to talk about the uh, XAI. So uh, as you can see just now, we, we will use the uh, uh, area under the curve of the ROC. Oh, area under the curve of the ROC curve. So uh, by as an example I did yesterday, using the occlusion explainer, we can apply this on the image. And then we will get the explainable uh, image here. As an example, you can see at the bottom, I call the occlusion constructor, put in the network, having a, uh, let's say a softmax activation function. And then I put the previous uh, preprocess image and I get some of the, actually there's an output here and you, you can get something like this. 
So it's very simple. So if you uh, if you completed this, then you will get the uh, gift for the 30 teams. So uh, if you want to get your own S uh, XAI score, uh, you can use a scikit-learn model, a uh, scikit-learn module, a library from uh, as a Python. You can use this scikit-learn, the matrix ROC, AUC score. And then actually we have a ground truth. If you see, this is a very bad uh, XAI uh, explanation because like the points here is not overlapping with the one there. So uh, some actually the explainer could be a bit slow. So you need to think about how to simplify your model design or use a very smarter method to get the, get the explainable score. Besides the uh, one we provided from my small explainer, you can also implement your own, but uh, it's better that you can explain it in the pitching when you really did that. Yeah. So now it's the more important part. Probably this is just for the six teams to listen, but you all have a chance, so try your best. So the first thing is uh, the top 16, so top six teams will go into the final round. And uh, the, the pitching will be around uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes of the presentation and five minutes of a QA. and a So uh, the presentation uh, markings will be around like this. So the first is the model design. So model design is how you design the model. Is it uh, creative enough? Do you implement any uh, methods to test the model? And then another thing is the explainable AI design. How do you achieve the explainable AI? And uh, actually, we don't encourage you to uh, tune your model based on the explainable AI. Uh, it's better, it's like how you train the model. Uh, we want to see that, yeah. So the next thing is the special part for the pitching. So it's also important for the innovation and commercialization idea. So after you create this model, what do you think the impact it will bring to others? So uh, this one has the highest percentage for 40%. You have worked so hard getting the six team, so this is the one that differentiates you from others, right? So the last is the presentation, how you can make the judges uh, feel exciting. So think about how you're gonna present your models on also what's the business uh, implication. So I quickly go through this uh, flow. So the first thing is the topic and the solution title. You probably need to highlight this. So this could be in the first page of your, of your pitch deck. The first is the uh, like quickly give a sentence that people can identify what method that you use. And you, it's better that you have a solution overview. So this one uh, highlights the whole uh, model design and then the judges can quickly pinpoint what is the specialty about your model. Yeah, and the next is you go detail into each part of your solution. And the result, you can show the result of after your tuning. So uh, probably you change the learning rate, the e-posh, and then you see uh, it's over trained and like, yeah, think about it, how to present this. And the lastly, the important part is the business contact users. So because this is, this have a highest percentage of a marks, Think about it, how you're gonna uh, earn money for the health in that from the health industries and for the health in health industry, right? Yeah. So besides that, you can have additional uh, parts of inside your presentation, the possible improvements that you couldn't achieve in the time being, some additional data discovery, like let's say you found out something from the data and you can export, how do you exploit that or how do you uh, use that to your advantage? And your progress report for the, the timeline of how you do the pre presentation, uh, uh, the presentation and also the training. Your team member details, to acknowledge your instructors, professors or business partners, like whoever have help you doing this uh, competition. 
it's better that you put it inside so we can get in touch with them uh, for any collaboration. So finally, it's also the appendices. Let's say you have some references or some ground, uh, some work that you base on. So uh, also as a ending here, we want to uh, do some marketing for our ceremony. So the final pitching will be at the 22nd of October, uh, in, o, in O2 at 70W, Hong Kong Science Park. And also uh, the time is 2.30, yeah. So I'll pass my time to Felix, thank you. Thank you, thank you Eugene and Ryan. Uh, so luckily, fortunately, we are ahead of our time. So uh, is there any questions? Is there any problems about the competitions, about the criteria, about your teammates or about uh, anything on training on cloud? So if you find any problems, so look for us, find us on, on Discord server. So we always there, uh, ask your questions. So especially when you are start training, you, you will find some difficulties at some point. So uh, I got one question uh, before. So for each team, how many credits did you have on the Huawei Cloud? So actually in your team, so actually each, each team, you share one Huawei Cloud account. So the whole team, one or two or three members, no matter how many members you have, you are sharing one Huawei Cloud account. And this has been already sent to you the email uh, with the account information. So for each account, you have, uh, there is already 3,000 uh, RMB coupon credits already in your account. So uh, yeah, you may receive some notifications about uh, you, your, your, uh, your account is running out, out of credit, 0, 0 0.0 in your account. So don't worry about this. The credits and the coupon are different, but the point is whenever, whenever you start your training job, it will deduct the coupon credit. So don't worry about this. So 3000 RMB is already deployed in your Huawei Cloud accounts for each team. And then for the evaluation platform as also, each team share one account. So share the password with your teammates and have your own communication before your submissions. So you have 30 chances to submit your model on the evaluation platform. So don't be shy, try to submit one or two to get familiarized on the whole process. So it doesn't matter and get some score as well. So if you have the base score over there, then you have the chance already there. But if you're not submitting, then your chance will be given to the others. All right. So is there any more problems, questions? So if no, then I would like to announce the most exciting part of the day is to obtaining and getting your souvenirs. So <laughs> don't laugh. I, I, I really love the souvenir as well. So uh, uh, thank you, Huawei Cloud, to sponsor all of the souvenirs. And thank you, uh, Hong Kong STP, to provide the venues and also all the opportunities to us to, to have this challenge. So uh, if you are free, uh, our colleagues will help on distributing the souvenir to you at the back. And also please help us on, we are having a video recording uh, for you having or uh, obtaining the, the, the souvenirs. And we would like to invite you to maybe say one or two words, maybe some slogan, let's say my sport challenge or Huawei cloud. So exciting, uh, you're joining the, the, the challenge. So our colleagues will help you on, 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 on doing this. So uh, please feel free. And you can also help your, your teammates to collect your souvenir as well. So don't be shy. All right, thank you so much. And we will stop here online. Thank you so much. If you have questions, Discord again. All right, see you. See you, see you on 22nd our, our October in our final pitching. And see you also online on Discord every, anytime. Thank you so much. Bye.